Engineered stone has become a popular feature of kitchen renovations, but it poses one of the biggest risks to the health and safety of workers since asbestos. Particles of dust from the dry cutting of engineered stone can lodge in the lungs of anyone close by, causing a fatal condition known as silicosis. Union and health experts want it to be banned, a subject that will be up for discussion when workplace relations ministers meet today. Tony Burke is the Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations and he's my guest this morning. Minister, welcome back to the program. Good morning, Patricia. Will today's meeting resolve to ban the use of engineered stone in Australia? What will happen today is I'll be recommending that we release the report publicly and then that we reconvene fairly soon. What once the report's been out there for people to be able to publicly see exactly how strong it is uh, for us to then make the decisions. The, the important thing here is the powers largely reside in work health and safety at a state level. Uh, I'm wanting to make sure that I can keep all the states moving together. I would have liked to have actually had agreement to release a report before today. Uh, I didn't get that agreement from every jurisdiction. I got it from, from most, but not from every jurisdiction. So today, we want to make sure that the report's released publicly. I'll tell you, the, the report is much stronger than I expected it to be. Uh, we put out three different options that we asked uh, Safe Work Australia to consider. Uh, one was a regulation system. The second was a ban of anything with silica content above 40%. And the third was a complete ban. Uh, the report, uh, which unfortunately some of it's appeared in the, in the media today in the papers prior to its release, uh, but what's reported there is correct. Uh, we've it's come back with a very strong recommendation in favour of a ban. Okay, so the report calls for an outright ban. That's right. And will you take that recommendation and make it law? Uh, the the power to do that rests with the state. So what we'll be doing today is doing the two stage. First thing, I don't think it's reasonable for us to be making a final decision without the public knowing what's in the report. There have been calls in the lead up to this meeting for the public release of the report. I wanted to be able to do that, but didn't get the agreement. Today, I intend to get the agreement so it can be public rele released. People have a right to know why there is such a strong recommendation. And then I want to make sure that we return before long, certainly this year, uh, for a further meeting where we can make final decisions. Some jurisdictions I expect will come out with their own position in advance of that. But we, we have a substance which is being compared to asbestos for a reason. Uh, and similar to asbestos, you know, if you have one of these kitchen bench tops in your home, while it's there, when it's stable, uh, it is not a risk. It is not an immediate panic or anything like that for people who have these in place. The risk comes either at installation or at renovation or removal. And we will be dealing with this as a legacy product for decades to come. Are you worried that some jurisdictions will try to avoid an outright ban? I would be surprised. I'd actually be surprised if the industry campaign that has been running so strongly with advertising over the last few days continues in that form once they've seen the report. Uh, I don't believe there's any section of Australia that will look lightly at the reality of people losing their lives because they went to work. And one of the key differences here between what we remember happening with asbestosis and mesothelioma was that with those diseases, they came on late in life. With silicosis, people get it young. Uh, I've met people in their 30s who now have silicosis. Uh, one worker said to me that his doctor said, OK, well, don't panic. Uh, you do have silicosis, but do you have your affairs in order? These are the questions that are being put to people because they went to work. And we need to take action. We need to take action soon. Uh, but I do think the public have a right for the public release of this report first. Minister, final question on this, but uh, will how quickly will we see a full ban on this? It's in the hands of the state jurisdictions. How quickly call... would you like to see it? Oh, you know, there's... I, I want as soon as possible for people to be safe when they go to work. It's, it's as simple as that. Uh, and so the states... I, I, I can see a lot of goodwill from all the jurisdictions here. I, think we, I don't think people will be disappointed in the pace of action. 
but you know, because the report wasn't released earlier, we're in a situation today where the public release of the report is is the priority. Uh, but I don't I don't get a sense from any jurisdiction that people are looking for delay. <laughs> Just uh, on another issue in your portfolio to industrial relations, WA Premier Roger Cook says the Prime Minister needs to carefully consider the legislation that you have, your IR bill, warning of the potential damage it could cause on the state's mining sector. What's your response to that? Oh, in terms of making sure that we carefully consider the implications, that's right, uh, and we are. If you have a look at the evidence that's been coming through the Senate inquiry at the moment in terms of the mining industry, there's some arguments that don't disagree with the policy intention of the government, which is to make sure that service contractors uh, aren't caught by the labour hire loophole sections. And there's some conversations going on about alternative drafting there. And that's, that's a very constructive conversation. Some businesses came to the Senate inquiry uh, from the mining sector uh, saying, oh, this will be a disaster for them. And then when they were asked, do you have an enterprise agreement? They said no, and then acknowledged it wasn't going to affect them at all. Uh, so there's been some businesses where there's been significant exaggeration. Uh, there are other areas where there are uh, constructive conversations that are happening. And there are some businesses that just don't want us to close the loophole. And that's where there's just a, a straight out difference of opinion. I, I don't think it's right that you can agree to an enterprise agreement, agree to a minimum rate of pay, and then undercut it by either employing people through a shelf company or a labour hire firm.